Welcome back everybody, Todd here. Today I thought I would do a walk around and cover some of the specs on this Trailmaster Storm 200 mini bike. I know when I was trying to do some research and you know, look at different mini bikes and try to sort out what was gonna be the best purchase for what I was looking for, I watched a lot of uh, videos and one of the things that I found lacking is, you know, people that kind of really take you around and, and give you some of the math on the bike. Because one of the things that I was looking at is, you know, we have a number of different grandkids and they're different ages and different sizes. So we wanted to pick up one that was small enough to introduce the smaller kids and let them to learn on. And, but I didn't want them to not be able to then want to ride it when they become a teenager. So I'll take you through some of the math on this bike and what led me to make my purchase decision. And hopefully this will help you out too. So come on and let's, let's take a look at this thing. This is the Trailmaster Storm 200. It is 196 cc's, even though they call it a 200. It's 196 cc's. It's six and a half horsepower air-cooled four-stroke single cylinder motor on it i'm gonna zero in because i can't pronounce this manufacturer's name it's a uh, it's a it's a chinese company so there's your motor manufacturer you know trailmaster like a lot of these is a company that pretty much just kind of specs out their bikes and then sends it out to be produced. I mean, that's what's happening all over the world. It doesn't matter if it's a motorcycle, a mini bike, or heck, even an automobile to a certain extent anymore. So, you know, one of the reasons that I chose to go with this particular bike is that Trailmaster has a really good reputation out there. Uh, it's not the cheapest bike, and that's kind of important, too, because a lot of these companies that are dealing with the big boxes, uh, you look at Monster Moto, Mega Moto. I mean, that's a company that got hooked up with Walmart and started moving their bikes through M Walmart. And according to my dealer, who used to be uh, a Mega dealer, uh, the deal with Walmart is what put them under. They somehow couldn't meet the terms of their contract with Walmart, and Walmart basically forced them out of business. So, you know, we, we see it all the time on Shark Tank, these companies that want to get too big too fast. Well, um, and you see that a lot with, you know, mini bike companies. They come and go. Trailmaster seems to have some good traction. It seems to be a good brand. It's got a solid dealership network, and I like that about the bike. So, you know, I, among other reasons, I chose that. Um, it's got more horsepower than a lot of the others, and, you know, that's going to just mean a better motor uh, lifespan, a little bit more power. Uh, the size of the bike, it, you know, it's bigger than a lot of the others and i'll kind of get into some of the size and in, in that in a minute here but uh same thing here you know you buy this for an eight-year-old a 10-year-old is anybody going to even ride it when they're a 14 16 17 year old well you saw if you watched my other video of unboxing on crating you saw my wife at 510 driving it or riding it you saw myself i'm 58 240 and I rode it and uh, the thing rides just fine again I'll get into some of the specs but so yeah um and you know if you look at the thing it's just quality you look at the quality of the welds you look at the powder coating and and stuff like that it, it really is I think a cut above many of the other options that I looked at that were out there so a couple of the specs that I think are important and I was looking for is seat height it's got a 25.2 inch seat height on it I know the Coleman's that I was looking at was a 23 inch seat height and the overall length of the bike this one's a little bit longer than most of the rest that are out there you know that's important if you're gonna put a teenager on this thing 
uh, if you're going to put an adult on it to take it for a spin. You don't want them falling off the back of the seat. And it also has a nice long seat on it. The ground clearance on it is four. I just put a tape measure on it. And, you know, ground clearance is like four inches, maybe four and a quarter, something like that. So, you know, you're not going to run this thing in the mud. It's, you know, you're going to have to run it on fairly firm ground, I think. It's not a trail bike per se. I mean, you certainly around the yard and off-road a little bit, but, you know, there is no suspension on it. It's a solid frame suspension, and, you know, that's to be expected. Um, a couple of things that I've already gotten some comments on is really nice foot pegs. Um, that's a pretty big deal. You want to be able to get your foot on the foot pegs. I know a lot of the others that I looked at, the foot pegs on those things were crap. I didn't see how you're going to actually maintain that. And you see a lot of people in their videos riding with their feet out, just holding them up. You know, that's dangerous. That's how you break a leg. So, you know, the foot pegs, I, I think, are pretty pretty solid. Um, the other thing here is the frame, uh, the capacity. Uh, the bike itself weighs 103 pounds, and... Um, it's, it's made to carry up to 175 pound passenger. So, you know, when you're starting to look at the, the kids are getting bigger or you want to ride it as a, as an adult or a teenager or whatever. Um, yeah, having the ability with that six and a half horse motor and the fact that it's made to carry a passenger 175 pounds or below. Now, it's funny because if you look at the certificate of origin or what would be the title on this thing, it lists a 300-pound GVWR, which is a gross vehicle weight, you know, of what it can carry. So if the bike's 103, do the math. I mean, it'll actually carry above 175. And again, I'll go back to, you saw me do a test drive on it. I'm 240 pounds and it ran just fine. So, um, you know, the bike itself, uh, pretty good. As far as the tires, it has 145 slash 70 dash 60s on it. And I put a measurement on, I put a tape measure, you know, that means those tires are about 14 inches high. And they're like six inches wide. So this thing's going to run good in sand for sure. And we got a lot of sand up north at our cabin. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be nice and stable. And most of them are. I think most of them are running relatively the same size, uh, you know, tires on it. It is a tubeless, two-ply tire. And they're recommending four pounds, four PSI for operating pressure and uh, a maximum of 24 pounds per square inch, uh, you know, to, to seat the bead on the tire. So four pound operating, that'll do really well in the sand. You'll see, you'll see I still haven't taken all the stickers off it. It's just so cold here. If I try to pull that, you can see it's got a little bit of a protective film over top of the logo and all of that. If I try to pull that off right now, as cold as it is, I'm afraid it'll take the whole logo sticker and everything off. So I'm probably going to just wait until it gets warmer to mess with that. Excuse me, mess with that. And then there's some residue of a sticker that was on the gas cap that just said there is no oil in it and of course as cold again there you go as cold as it is it just the stickers aren't going to come off but so i bought this through a place called tx power sports and their website is txpowersports.com they're a dealership out of texas and it's american owned and operated business which is nice uh, they offer free shipping and, and I'm not paid by them or anything. I'm just giving you the 411 on what I did and where I bought it. 
and they had as good a price as any. And when you factored in the fact that they've got free shipping, which a lot of places do, that was nice. But they also, because they're a Texas-based, they're solely a Texas-based company, I didn't pay any sales tax. So unless you live in the state of Texas, if you buy through TX Power Sports, you won't have to pay any sales tax on it. Now, we could get into a debate all day long. What, what does the IRS say about that? Yada, yada, yada. But the bottom line is that I didn't hit my debit card for anything more than what I paid. And I ended up, it was delivered to the house for $564 all in. So, not bad. Um, so, a couple of other things about the the bike and TX Power Sports, uh, they provide a one-year warranty and also a 90-day uh, manufacturer's parts warranty as well. So, and the one-year warranty is on the engine. The 90 days is on the entire vehicle for manufacturer's parts. You know, you can't go out and beat these things and expect somebody to warranty it, you know. But you do want to know there's somebody standing behind it like this one. I'm going to, you know, we've, yeah, we've driven it around a little bit just to make sure that it's running. I, you know, with a warranty ticking, I wanted to make sure the darn thing would run, hold oil, et cetera, et cetera. So that's all been going really well. So, but, you know, that's what I paid for it. And, you know, this is January of 2021. Let's talk gas. The owner's manual recommends just a, an unleaded gasoline, 87 octane or better. And that's all I put in it at this point. You know, you can try to run it at a hotter fuel, but, you know, I'm not sure that I care that much about top performance on it. And as long as it's going to run good, uh, it's going to be good on fuel. There's... Uh, let's get down here. I've taken the cap off on the air filter. So here you go. You've got a, here's your, for your gas valve right here. So if you want to shut the gas off, you just pull that back. Get, pull it forward. There's your gas on. Here's your choke. Here's something that you're going to want to do though. And you can see it on a lot of other videos. All right. I'm going to come back in here bear with the camera work here all right i'm going to try to point with a screwdriver right to there you see that that is the throttle control and there's a spring on it and the way it's set from the factory it restricts how much throttle you can give the bike you can reach in there with a the phillips head and crank that back and then the throttle will open up a lot more. So like when Laura did a test drive on this thing and uh, just, you know, we're not trying to press it hard during break-in, but, you know, she ran it up to like 20.3 miles an hour. I could guarantee you this thing will go a lot faster than that at 196 cc's. And just what I did there, and I just did that, uh, you know, what, after uh, just a few minutes ago that gave it a lot more throttle so this thing's going to pick up speed you know and the manual rates it for 25 miles per hour i've seen videos out there where guys are taking this north of that by a quite a little bit so without doing any significant mods other than what i just did there so again you're going to want to you're for sure going to want to do that. Unless you have a little tyke and you don't want them to have that much throttle, then you can crank it down. So I do like the fact, and we might do that when we have some of the little kids on it, I might crank it down so that they can't get themselves into trouble. You can see I took the uh, top off the air cleaner. It's real simple to maintain that, you know. This thing just pops back on and screws down on top of there. So, you know, that's easy. From a maintenance point of view, really, it's a nice bike to to take care of. You've got the oil fill and dipstick right down there. Then right underneath it, in the front of the motor, is your oil drain plug. And uh, so it couldn't be easier to 
add and take the oil out of the thing. Now, one thing that you do want to make sure on these things is you've got the bike sitting level when you check the oil or when you fill it. And that's easy. Again, I don't need to tell you guys. You probably already know a lot of this stuff, so no worries there. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a complicated bike. Uh, the tension, I like that. Here's how you adjust the tension on the chain. A lot of them will have uh, a thing up here, a tension control, where the chain runs over top of that and then into the, the front sprocket. This doesn't do that. It's running straight around, and then you use the adjustment right there to kick the wheel back and lock it in place. And there's an adjustment on both sides. That way you can make sure that you're running straight, you know. It's got a disc brake in the rear. So you got the handle up here, one handle disc brake. I thought the disc brake worked pretty good, and that's moving my fat butt around. So, you know, if you got a little kid or <coughs> a lightweight individual, it's going to really stop quite well. There's your kill switch. You push it down to kill it. You pop the back one to pop it up, and then it's ready to go to start it up. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a complicated bike. Talk a little bit about the oil. Now, the manual right from Trailmaster's owner's manual, uh, suggests an SAE15W40. Um, and you're just not going to find it. You know, I talked to my dealer about that. I've got a, a Trailmaster dealer. That I'm going to be buying two of the, um, I think it's MB200s, the larger size, full suspension, 200cc bikes. Um, taller and, and we're getting those for the adults to ride and for when the kids kind of outgrow these <clears throat> and again if you're running it for your grandkids you probably like me you got different ages so um, as they outgrow this or can jump into the other one then they can move their way up but I like the mini bike because you don't have to worry about teaching somebody how to use a clutch and to run through the gears etc etc and uh you know, the Trailmaster MB200 uh, is a full suspension bike. Now, it's a bigger bike. I think that thing weighs like 185 pounds, and that's a lot of bike for a small child to handle. If this is at 103 to 110, depending on how I think it's how much gas you got in it or whatever, it might sit dry at 103. Um, so, anyways, uh, but the Trailmaster owner's manual on this is calling for the SAE 15W40. My, my Trailmaster guy says they've been running 10W40 synthetic in them forever. And this guy has a very successful dealership. He runs all kinds of mini bikes and scooters and motorcycles, and that's just their go-to. Yeah, that synthetic motor oil is going to cost you twice as much, but it's really providing a lot more lubrication in there. And again, we're in a Michigan climate. Um, if you're in a different climate where you're getting, you're probably not going to be much colder than we are unless you're up in Alaska or something, uh, maybe the north, northern reaches of Minnesota. But um, you might be out in the desert. You might have a lot more heat than we have. So by all means, check with your dealer in your area just to find out what their recommendation is. But the 1040 synthetic is what I'm running in it. It takes a half a, a half quart to put the oil in it. Now, the manual also talks about um, a maintenance chart. Do your first uh, oil change at 20 hours. Yeah, I'll probably cut that in half. You know, you're going to have metal parts running around inside of there. The sooner you get them out, the better. And if you're only using a half quart of oil, come on, man. You're talking about like a, a $4 oil change. You might as well knock it out and do a couple of them early on. But after that, it, it calls, the manual calls for an oil change every 100 hours. Now, um... One of the other things I like about this is it has the oil alert system that's designed 
into the engine to prevent damage caused by, you know, running it with an insufficient amount of oil in the crankcase. So what happens is the motor will actually cut out on you if it thinks it doesn't have enough oil in the crankcase. And I could tell you this thing works because the other day I start I started up the bike and I didn't run it much at all. I just brought it brought it up once it idled on its own i jump i jumped on it because i hadn't been on it yet i thought i'd run it down to the end of the driveway and back and i got halfway down to the end of that driveway and it cut out on me it just quit and i brought it back here choked it started it up let it run warmed it up laura took it we took it so it's just because it had been sitting out here in this michigan temperatures where it was cold as heck and you're running a 40 weight or a 1040 oil in there it just wasn't moving well enough that the bike just didn't feel it was getting lubricated enough and that cut out so that's especially comforting to know that it's got you know that kind of at least technology in it because you know if kids are running it you can't expect them to check it all the time and at some point you know you, you got to be able to teach them how to do maintenance and let them be in charge of checking the oil every time out and what have you so i thought that's a nice feature oil wise i fired it up one pull and that was it no problem whatsoever Ran the choke about half for just a few seconds there, you saw. Took the choke off, it's idling nice. So it's been what little bit I've been, you know, working the bike. It's been pretty nice, it's been pretty dependable. It starts right up. I mean, when I took it out of the box, it was second pull and it cranked right up. It hasn't taken more than one pull anytime I've started it since then. So, yeah. It's definitely uh, it, it's it's a de it's definitely a good purchase. You know, check back with me. I'll be doing a lot more videos on this bike and the next couple of bikes that I get, the next uh, MB 200s, and uh, I'll take you around them and I'll give you the the straight up on it. If it's good, I'll tell you it's good. If it's bad, I'll tell you it's bad. So I appreciate you tagging along. Do me a favor and hit that like button. That helps me out. And I really appreciate it if you'd like to subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out, you know, some more mini bike uh, videos, motorcycle stuff. Uh, you know, we've got a cabin up north, so we do a lot of work up with a tractor and uh, wildlife management and what have you. So, yeah, tag along, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate you checking in today. Thanks.